Okay. Wendy is an associate professor in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering here at Stony Brook. Her current research interests are in wireless sensor networks, communication networks, and graph theory applications. Dr. Chang is currently the associate chair for electrical and computer engineering, and she also serves as the faculty director for the Honors College and the program director for the Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering Online program. Thank you, Nina. Good morning, everyone. My name is Wendy Tang. As Nina said, I'm a faculty in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. And like many of my colleagues, I wear different hats. I'm the faculty director for the Honors College, also co-chair of the MOOC Task Force, along with Erano Mendieta in philosophy. And today, before, uh, today, basically, I'm speaking mostly in my capacity as the program director for the Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering Online program. Before I begin, I'd like to share with you my experience. For me, one of the most rewarding aspects of my role is actually the opportunity to interact with colleagues in online education, both within and outside of electrical engineering. In fact, I believe my role here as the program director has led to my involvement in the Mood Task Force, which, I think, is the beginning of many beautiful friendships. <laughs> and along that line, I'd like to thank Patricia Sapiers, our fellow Musi, and one of my beautiful friendships, Linda Unger, for co-organizing co -organi uh, this forum for us to share with and also to listen to each other. So here's my presentation. We'll begin with the history of the program, talk about how we begin, and then talk about the specific, unique uh, student body we have, and uh, also our curriculum. And then I'll talk about some of the common challenges we face along with other online education program. And then we'll shoot into the specific for us, which I think many of you are already thinking about it, namely, how do we do less online? And then afterwards, um, for us, actually, myself and my colleagues included, we feel that such a challenge is also an opportunity for innovation. In fact, today, I'll share with you a couple of such innovations. I'll then summarize the talk and end the presentation with the voices of our students. Uh, the program began uh, with funding from the, uh, from the Snow Foundation in the summer of 20, 2008, sorry, 2006. And that initially is an upper division program. We only offer courses, electrical engineering courses, online in the junior and senior year. And uh, from, from day one, it started with the three university centers, Stony Brook, Buffalo, and Binghamton. Uh, in the early days, uh, both uh, Buffalo and Binghamton has administered the program. Eventually, it got shifted to Stony Brook. Now we have the dean on the, uh, on the program, and we have obtained um, New York State accreditation a couple of years ago in May 2011. Uh, courses are basically offered asynchronously online through Backboard, some are through Apple 360, and today, this afternoon, I will have stationed that to demonstrate to you how it works. Some are ta uh, talking PowerPoints with um, annotation that kind of explaining the circuits and, and different uh, theory of the course. And then uh, this slide here shows our student body, like many of their online programs like SPD or perhaps nursing. Our student body are unique in the sense that they are somewhat older, many indeed the average perhaps in 30 to 48 years old age uh, 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 format. And then most are working full-time professionals taking the courses and the program part-time. And uh, usually they take one or two courses per semester. And uh, the distribution is that the majority in New York states, and then we have some international students along with other states. And then currently in this semester, we have about 40, 40 students are in, the, in the program. So we are somewhat small. In terms of the courses, we offer the full fetch of the curriculum. 
that beginning with the SE123, the introduction uh, engineering, electrical engineering courses. Altogether, there are uh, 15 core courses that are required. The lower division courses, some students will take it from community college and transfer over. Uh, in the beginning, we did not offer the 100 level and 200 level courses because the program was intended as an upper division program, but then with experience, we find that there is a demand and we started now to offer a full curriculum, the electrical engineering curriculum online. Uh, we have also technical electives that are all together. We have uh, a nine electives that students need to choose for of them. So this slide shows more or less the challenges and, 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 and triumphs that we have most shared with actually other online programs, including you know, student engagement, the setting up of community, that's I'm taking note in it because indeed that's so important for our program. And also authentication and partnering, you know, Joanne and Paul's database program, looking so forward to that and utilizing the database to kind of uh, help us in terms of the authentication process. And then, of course, the interaction of it, our students and faculty. And then, in terms of time, we share you know, the benefit of online program, being able to offer the courses in a flexible schedule, and that students can tailor their learning. You know, learning uh, computers are infinitely patient, and therefore, you know, segments, modules can all be repeated until they get it, that kind of thing. So in is individualized learning at one's own pace. And then now it comes to the unique aspect of it, that uh, how do we do less online? For now, today we have this semester, four courses offered in the online, uh, laboratory courses in an online format. Two of it has been done, have been done for a while that um, the 352 and 353, these are the basic electronics lab one and two. We have been doing it since uh, 2006, um, six years ago now. And that uh, is offered by faculty uh, from Buffalo, Professor Paolo Liu, and we'll talk a little bit about it. And basically, to understand how the labs are done, I need to explain to you that for us, electrical engineering labs, our, the goal of the labs, the different labs are basically for design, build, diagnose, and characterization of circuits and devices. So I think in a certain way, we are fortunate in the sense that there are not a lot of safety issues involved in our lab. Students mostly can do their experiment, to build their circuit, test it at home without much of a safety concern. So I think that's one of the reasons that we are one of the first entering program to go online. And that uh, we do use circuit simulation software, which obviously is done at home. Usually students will do a P-Lab with the simulation before they actually do the building of the circuit and then the testing and so forth. And then we also want to emphasize that the experiments are the same, either online or on campus. So it's the same set of experiments being done for both formats. Uh, this slide shows so more or less the, uh, the main difference between the online and the on-campus version is the equipment. Students at home cannot afford a $2,000 oscilloscopes that we use on campus, and then it has expensive function, function generators for signals and so forth. So what we do as an alternative, as the technology improving now, we have what we call USB oscilloscope. So that is a typical USB oscilloscope. It left obviously the screen that, you know, in the on-campus version, the expensive version, but we can display the, the result of the oscilloscope on the computer through a computer interface. So that's kind of already allowing the job to be done. And then we use some part generation for, of the computer for the signal generation. The only thing is that it's restricted to low frequency signals, the audio band, which is somewhere between 20 and 20 kilohertz. So that with this setup, so students are able to do the experiment at home. So this is what a typical experiment would look like, that, can, that is a building a digital counter using breadboard. This is the digital counter and also along the fan. 
and other power circuits and on the platform. So students will basically design the experiment, build it at home, test it. If there's any issue, we'll talk, we'll have a Skype session uh, or video conferencing session with the instructor, kind of a brainstorm and troubleshoot the problem. So uh, with that, and then we, I also mentioned to you that we also consider this challenge of laboratory online an opportunity for innovation. In fact, my colleague here, Dr. Guzman, has, is very, inno uh, you know, very innovative in that he designed a lab kit that we have it here as the prototype of it. And that this is the picture of it, that it's a small box that, you know, uh, only a foot or so long. And that inside, you know, are all the, the, the breadboard along with a camera so that uh, the an instructor will be able to see and all. In. I remember when I went through my curriculum, we do carry that breadboard when we're doing the, uh, 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 taking the lab courses on campus. But the student more or less at home can do the same thing for just an innovative approach. And then in another uh, innovation is that we consider an innovative learning outcome. For entering programs, we have to go through ABAC accreditation. And then most entering programs take on what the ABAC outcomes A through K. Some typical outcome is knowledge of using math and science, knowledge of able to work in teams, and also to do experiment and so forth. And then we figure out, we want to first give an identity for the online program. Uh, I also should mention that our online program is a separate uh, program from the on-campus version. Our on-campus electrical engineering is Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical Engineering, whereas the online is Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering Online, and therefore it's a totally separate program. And for that, we want to give it a, an identity and what comes natural of it is a special learning outcome that we um, say that we ask students to have the ability to communicate and collaborate effectively online. This is almost come within the territory and also from our experience in interacting with industry with our alumni, all of our graduates come back and tell us that when they go to work in industry, they all interact with their counterparts Worldwide, by one So that we felt that this is a good outcome and it is fitting and it is useful. And that kind of summarizes my talk. In here, we talk about the fact that uh, our program is a multi campus program, totally online, completely. It's a degree program. And also, uh, innovation is one of the first in the nation for engineering programs. And that um, we have an innovative lab kit and also uh, new out learning outcomes. And most importantly, uh, the collaboration aspects. We have three university centers working together, and we are now linking up with community colleges, also in New York State, kind of a natural transition from students in the community college going into the online program in electrical engineering. And then we felt that in addition to the interaction with the faculty and colleagues in online education, we felt that we are also joining forces to make a difference. And we're basically serving a student population that are otherwise unable to pursue higher education online and in electrical engineering. And that this picture here shows who we are. Uh, most of our faculty are from um, Stony Brook. And we have a couple of faculty from Buffalo, a couple of faculty from uh, Binghamton, and that uh, Professor Paolo Lear is the one that is the innovator on the uh, first electronic lab online uh, course. And these are our students. And next I would like them to speak for themselves. My name is Roger Alford, and I live in Michigan. I am married with three adult kids and three grandkids. I studied electrical engineering at the University of Michigan for a few years, starting in 1978. 
but due to personal circumstances, I was unable to complete my degree at that time. I have always wanted and intended to finish my degree, but this proved impractical once I had a family and had to work full time. The academic schedule was just not compatible with my work schedule. While not having a degree limited my career options, especially in the early years, I have been fortunate to have been able to work as an engineer throughout my career. I currently work for a global medical device company where I help design life-sustaining medical devices. I was very excited when I discovered the new online BSEE completion program at Stony Brook. This is exactly what I needed to be able to finish my degree around my work schedule. I started taking the online courses in 2008 and have now completed 10 courses. The experience has been challenging, but very rewarding. I learned a lot. The BSEE curriculum has changed considerably since my U of M days, and the use of modern computer-based tools in my courses has greatly enhanced the learning experience. MATLAB is an extremely powerful math tool with many uses in electrical engineering. PSPICE allows circuit simulation and transistor modeling. Inexpensive oscilloscopes allow waveforms to be captured and analyzed. And even spreadsheets have powerful calculation and plotting capabilities. And there are many online resources used by these courses that provide excellent animated models of concepts that are otherwise sometimes difficult to grasp. I was surprised at how practical and fun it was to complete two online lab courses using some inexpensive lab tools and a collection of electronic components, an approach that was both creative and effective. The foundation for my positive experience, of course, has been my professors. I have been impressed with the quality and effectiveness of their instruction and supporting materials, their helpfulness in answering questions, and their flexibility in accommodating schedule anomalies, such as business travel. Needless to say, I am very excited about finishing the EE degree I started so long ago. Completing this degree will give me a great sense of accomplishment and satisfaction. But even more than that, I know it will make me a better engineer because it already has. Hello, my name is Peter Paz Piquel. I'm 42 years old. I live in Rochester, New York. I'm married with uh, two small children. Um, I got an associate's degree in physics in 1992 from Mohawk Valley Community College. And since then, I've taken um, a lot of uh, double E courses in the last 20 years from uh, Rochester Institute of Technology at a uh, fairly high cost um, to me. Um, I've worked for General Motors Fuel Cell Research and Development for approximately 15 years. And um, I started taking um, the Stony Brook University EE courses online, um, first, at, first uh, part time um, in the fall of 2008. Then um, in the May of uh, 2012, um, I got let go from General Motors and I started taking um, the EE courses from Stony Brook um, full time in the fall of 2012. Um, now I'm on course to graduate in May uh, 2014 uh, with a bachelor degree in EE. Um, so as far as the online studies go, um, they work for me for a multitude of reasons. Uh, since I have a family, the, the availability for me to work on assignments is, is at times to be spotty. Um, so not being bound by the rigid class schedule really works great for me. Um, and the second big reason is uh, because of the location of Rochester, um, there are only private universities that offer double degrees in, uh, in, in and around Rochester. Um, the closest SUNY college is in Buffalo, and it's about an hour away commuting. Um, so that, that's, that's, that'll be a fairly long commute. I have considered it, but um, since this online um, 
option became available, it, 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 it went into the background. Um, so because of the online availability, um, I, um, I don't have to commute, and I still get the benefit of the SUNY education um, at the SUNY tuition rates. And uh, that, um, that is of, of real, real benefit to me. I have one more, but um, Hi, I am Forrest Kimbrell and I live in California. I received most of my early education through the Navy Electronics School. I began this program back in 2008. Currently, I'm an automation technician with Chevron Production and work mostly with field automation equipment and DLC programming. The lab degree engineering circuits on breadboard was an exciting time. Although I haven't completed the program, so far I've learned a great deal about circuit design, semiconductor design, and probability theory. And I'm excited about my senior project next year. I really enjoy how well the courses are structured and the ability to complete the courses on schedule and on my own time. Currently, I'm working with my company to secure an engineering position once I finish my degree. I'm personally hoping for automation controls engineer, but we'll see. Obtaining a BS degree will open many opportunities for advancement as well as better pay and retirement for my family. It's looking like a great opportunity already. Thank you. That's all. Thank you.